Hi folks, Okamoto Surface Grinder. Check it out. I've been wanting one, I found one, great deal used. I was able to go down to Louisville, Kentucky with Jared, we took a trailer. I was able to see it under power. So the table fed, which to me said, okay, the hydraulics should be okay. And the magnet worked. The magnets alone are, are almost as much as I paid for the machine. So if the magnet didn't work, I wasn't gonna buy it. But these things aren't super intuitive to use. In other words, you can't even get the table to start motion unless you've got controls in a certain positions. And grinders are scary. If you downfeed a grinder, you can blow up a wheel. And these wheels are, are this one's worn down a bit, but they're 12 inch wheels. So I wanted to know what I was doing. The other thing is it really needs new hydraulic oil, which is about a thousand bucks, which I'm fine with, but I didn't want to put that money into it until I figure out if this machine is good. So the folks, remember the IMTS video, we were looking at Samsung lathes. They're distributed for Ohio by Reynolds Machinery, who is also the Okamoto dealer. So I got to know this guy, Parker, who works at Reynolds Machinery. And I said, hey, we bought this Okamoto grinder. Are you, do you service the used grinders? And they said, absolutely, no problem at all. So Jim is here today and we're going through the whole machine. He said that the panel looks really good. You know, there's some light corrosion in the bottom, which is no problem, but you can see here the stuff is good and that's really important. So we kind of started from the fundamentals. The hydraulic motor's really loud. I don't think it's a problem. We're gonna keep working on it. There are some things that are broken. Table speed control is not working. You can actually override that with the hydraulic pressure in the back, but that's no good. Our automatic downfeed isn't working, so I can still do manual downfeed, but that's something else. And the diamond dresser is frozen. The hydraulic infeed works, so this thing will actually come across the wheel, but we've got to get that working as well. So definitely some work to do, but so far so good. So here's yours truly, as well as Jim from Reynolds, and he had this method. So we started out, he said, I just want to measure some basic electrical stuff, you know, no offense to your electrician. He's like, I just like to build from the ground up. So he had, he had his meter with him. He had that book, uh, Ugly's uh, Electric, electronics or what's something electrician's book uh, to an electrician I'm sure this stuff's easy but you know checking your voltage tap checking the transformers what's going in what's going out you know so things like Y Delta understanding UVW which I think is the European nomenclature for three phase wiring versus L1 L2 L3 obviously has done this enough times where when you find problems downstream but you never bother to check the fundamentals you'll end up being counterproductive so he started to learn this machine and get comfortable with it. I think it was actually an older machine than he'd ever worked on himself. He is an Okamoto service tech, so he knows Okamoto's in general, but he saw some things that were similar, but he was like, oh, I've never seen a mechanical switch on this. You know, it's always been earlier before. And so he knew how to get it up and running. I couldn't even do that after we brought it back, mostly because you had to have the levers in certain positions, which I now, after we're done, understand and it's pretty logical. But that was a huge confidence booster in and of itself. And like the hydraulic pump was sounding a lot to me but he knew hey that's okay or that's not okay he was able to look at the hydraulic pressure and tell me it's actually interesting it only runs at like 200 and some psi which is nothing for hydraulics and checking how much amps certain motors were pulling to make sure that they were not straining they were in the sort of the right range looking at the sight glass checking the gravity feed system for the lubrication again that's this kind of stuff it makes me feel so good about hopefully long-term use of this thing i'm taking notes as best i can he started to teach me some of the handles and the knobs the do's and the don'ts. The problem that we still had at this point is we're getting a big knock and we weren't having good hydraulics adjustment on the y-axis or the cross feed. He thought and I certainly didn't disagree that we probably had a failing valve or something that was going to require us to tear into the hydraulics and probably get pretty expensive pretty quick. And now we got to level it. So we cribbed it up. I didn't even realize it, but we had the original leveling feet. They were buried inside the coolant tank of all places. So Jared cleaned those up while we started shimming it up. We had put just some steel plates underneath it, but obviously much better to use the factory cast iron leveling pads, which was great. Once we get all five feet up on it, you can see the level that's on the magnetic chuck right now. Jim leveled the machine in and he was saying that because this machine is so rigid, it's not as fussy about the level. Although I got to just say, I can't imagine that you're helping yourself if you aren't leveled because the reality is this is a machine that should be able to hold tenths and you want to stack the deck in your favor. I made one huge mistake when the riggers were here. I can't believe I did it. I should have known better. It has five feet sitting on four different concrete slabs. You can see the joint right there on the floor running in both directions. So that's an amateur hour mistake. We'll have to move the machine and re-level it because it can span 
one joint, I guess, but really spanning zero is best. Oh well, lesson learned. Really good method to leveling the machine. We leveled the front two feet, then the back foot, and then we start, as you can see here, putting the level at an angle and leveling the two angles. And then you take a, uh, just a light amount of tension off the column, you check your column tram, and then you go back and go left to right again, and you just walk it in. It's an iterative process. It, it takes some adjusting, but we got it within a couple of tenths on that Mitsu Toyu level. So he was pretty happy with that, and I certainly couldn't disagree. This makes me so happy. Jim figured out that this switch here ties in with the mechanical interface of the Z auto plunge. So it'll auto plunge down, but it has to do that off the part. So you set that location so it doesn't plunge in the middle of your part. We weren't sure what that was. We weren't sure why the auto down feet wasn't working. This makes me feel so good because you guys know me, I'm frugal. And I was like, oh, the cost of having the service guy come is not cheap, but that was kind of the deal. I was like, John, it's okay. You got this grinder for a great deal. Spend the money to get this thing working. We do still have a problem though. We hear that knocking when it changes direction here. And it's not a level issue. We leveled it up. Actually, Jim did a great job. This was a Mitsu Toyu level that's, would you say this two tenths? Two tenths, 40 millions per division. Yeah, two tenths per division. So we got the thing leveled up. Hopefully, it's really just this valve right here. And the, the bad news is that that may be proprietary and that could be a big problem. We'll see. I think we figured it out. It's not actually a major hydraulic problem. Jim was playing around and when he held this switch in, then the variable speed hydraulic valve works and we don't have that knocking noise. Those were the two problems. How awesome is that? Big shout out to Reynolds Machinery. I was committed to having them come out here to look at it, but I was hesitant to see yeah, how well was this gonna go. This is awesome. So here we are, we've got this AC solenoid that opens and closes to allow hydraulic fluid in. And Jim thought, hey, that's seized, it's not opening. So boy, we tore it apart. And this is something like, I wouldn't do this on my own because there's a eclipse snap ring type thing in there. There's a very specific order. There's more wave springs, but nothing crazy. If you do this all the time, perhaps it's no big deal. But even Jim put it back together with one thing out of order once. And then we started looking at it and we figured out, oh, that's what we did wrong. And you can see the two paper towels on the back side of the table. When he took it apart, we laid everything out in the same order. So that way, in theory, we should be putting it back together. And all it was, was taking the, I don't know what you call it on a solenoid, but the center shaft that's actuated by the magnetic coil and hitting it with a scotch bright wheel. I, I don't, I wasn't there to look to see whether it was just a burr or whether, or what had caused it. But sure enough, whether it was getting that burr off there or just cleaning out, relubing it, we got that uh, solenoid actuating on our own just by movement by hand with a pin or pencil. And then we put it back in the machine and she worked, which was awesome. So this didn't solve the problem. We still got some other problem, which we think is electrical, but hopefully not a big deal, knock on wood. But this was obviously still something that we had to get fixed. And it's pretty cool that we did have to spend the money to buy a new one of these. It was just a, a little bit of TLC. So Jim looked at me and said, hey, you want to grind apart? I didn't plan on using the wheel, but Jim looked at it and said, yeah, you know, we should, it should be fine. So I grabbed a block of steel, we checked the magnet and he set it up. Obviously we're trying to be smart and stay on the right side of the machine while it's grinding. And Jim operated it for at first and then it gave me the chance to run it, which was really awesome. I was really glad that we did that because it gave me the confidence to know, hey, I can grind apart on this thing now. Even though the auto down feed isn't working, it doesn't stop you from grinding on it at all. And then I took over just in the down feed marking which way it goes down, that wasn't on the machine. And then he went over all the controls again with me. I'm taking notes, we're adjusting, just making sure it works. And boy, we ran this thing for a while. I've got to get the coolant system, the coolant tank cleaned out and get that up and working because I don't plan on dry grinding. Obviously want to use uh, coolant here, but should be good to go. And again, I was on cloud nine. I couldn't believe how well it went. And it was really happy. And here's Judd, you know, sitting on my lap, very upset. He doesn't like the noise of the hydraulic pump. We have a grinder! Folks, I am so excited. I was nervous. Uh, you know, how much of a project was this gonna be? How much money was it gonna take to get it working? Do we have a major hydraulic problem? And here's what's awesome about this machine. It's not CNC, but it is automatic. So what do I mean by automatic? This is your Z height control. So if I, your head height. So if I turn this in, which just locks the wheel in, I can now use the wheel to raise and lower the head. You turn this to disable the wheel, that way it doesn't move when the thing machine is moving. So what do you do? This collar has numbers on it. What you do is you'll decide how high up you are over your part. So let's say I wanna grind off. In this case, it would be 
how it's set right now, 20 thousandths of an inch. That's where the mark is right here. Then we've got a knob right here, and that determines how far down it goes each pass. So subject to your step down, it's gonna grind 20 thousandths off, and as soon as this gets to zero, there's a switch right here. And when that switch is set to on, then at zero, it will stop going down any further. Then it'll start sparking out. And depending on whether you have this set to one, two, three, four, five, it will go back and forth across your part that number of times to do a spark out, which if you watched our video on grinding the parallel, we sparked that thing out for 15 minutes, which I feel like was still overkill. Now we don't know when it's done with the spark out, does it park the machine off to the side? The newer machines do, but all of this stuff is controlled via you know relays and solenoids. It's all mechanical. There's no CNC side of this, there's no code. So unfortunately that isn't working and it's only because of one small thing which we need an electrical diagram to fix. So I we, we should be able to get it working, but it's definitely not at the moment. Again, credit to Reynolds. We tore apart that solenoid that's actuating one of these things, the hydraulic system to cause this thing to peck down. We got it working, but it's not, there's a little electrical thing in there. Again, knock on 10,000 pounds of cast iron, not a big deal. Let's grind. So definitely just having fun here. The magnetic chuck has not been trued up or ground in, and the wheel actually hasn't even been dressed. I wasn't gonna use this wheel, but the service tech said, no, it looks fine, don't worry about it. So let's see here, turn the magnet on. That's on. Let's lower the head down. Okay, that's enough for me. Let's make sure. Okay, now we'll start over here. Hydraulic pump, I also have to work on the coolant system, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Last thing too is the dresser needs some work just inside of it, but look, it's hydraulic. You pull this handle, it automatically moves this out, dresses your wheel, it even will click, cam click it down. I think if, we might be able to see that here. Uh, it's supposed to ratchet paw down one step. I'll uh, work on that later. Okay, so let's just see where we're at with motion. Turn it on. So we got our Y travel. Let's check that first. Make sure we're coming all the way over on the part. Yep, we're getting across enough of it. Wheel on. We're making chips, or sparks. These actually are in really just small chips. But scientists don't crucify me here. They're so small that they subject, they burn up. Uh, unlike a machine chip where it has enough mass to hold the heat in or dissipate it more slowly, that's all these are. Grinding is an abrasive process, obviously, versus a shearing action of a mill. And the beautiful thing about grinding is the grinding wheel is self-sharpening to some extent because it'll tear off and re-expose fresh particles. Now they'll still load up and your diameter will still reduce over time, which is why you dress it, but that's the idea is as those tear off, new sharp ones are kind of right behind there and they keep cutting. And don't stand on the other side of the grinder. Uh, this is just the beginning. I now need to really learn how to grind. I'm gonna buy, I think, one of the Norton 46H wheels. If anybody has any advice against that or otherwise, let me know. Otherwise, it's game on. Like, this is awesome. Get the coolant system working. The dresser isn't even that important. I can deal with that with the diamond on the table. and and get the uh, auto down feed working. Awesome, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned. Take care. More to come. Click subscribe if you want to see more on this stuff. See you soon.